What's up guys? So today's my second to last day at IBM, just cleaning out my desk. And that's kind of a bittersweet moment, you know? Been here a couple years, but we're moving on. And I'll tell you uh, in this video how I did it. Yeah, so it's, it's my last day at IBM now. And I really wanted to get the moment when I closed my laptop for the last time. All right, goodbye. You served me really well. But uh, I do really like the smell of new laptop, new work laptop. I got a Dell, if any of you guys were wondering, for the next workstation. And I just wanted to take a moment to go over some of the lessons that I learned at my uh, second job. IBM was my second job in the tech industry. And so I wanted to go over some of the things I learned over my time there. And how it kind of relates to our careers as um, developer, self-taught developers, with especially those with no degrees. I mean, these things will apply to people with degrees too, but I think it'll be especially helpful for people without degrees because it's a lot harder to find um, a career path that helps people on, on that route. So I really, first of all, would highly, highly recommend any of you guys without degrees to look, look into apprenticeships or some people, you know, prefer boot camps. But an apprenticeship will get you a paid way to work for another company and um, you you know you get to work for them and if they like you you get to be hired on full-time and it's a win-win situation for the company and the person like in my case um, I was billable for uh, for over two years uh, for two years actually and we're, we basically come in as super cheap labor and that's one of the things I've that, that I've learned over the past few years is that our advantage as um, non-degree holders is that, it might sound weird, but we're, we're basically cheap labor. And it's messed up, but if you think about it, we didn't pay for tuition and things like that, so uh, they don't really need to put on that premium of someone with a university degree. And eventually things even out anyway, because I mean, as I've seen with my third job in the industry now, my, my pay rate is much more in line with what you'd see as a university graduate, in my, in my opinion. So another lesson that I've learned is that you really have to have a concrete vision for what you want your career to look like in the future. Because if you don't, uh, one of the necessary things you'll, you'll need to do as a non-degree holder is potentially take up some jobs that aren't exactly what you're looking for. For example, I like to do like Node.js development, back-end development, Front end, I can do front end, but I've learned over time that I prefer to do back end things and uh, work on the more lo logical side. I find front end kind of tedious in a lot of ways. And I might, it, with my work with IBM and with uh, the law firm that I worked at before, it was mostly front end work, building dashboards. And in IBM, I actually was able to carve out an area where I was actually working in JavaScript, doing back end as well as the front end. So basically full stack. And that really helped prepare me for my next job, as well as you know making me very valuable at the company that I was at. And if I had some kind of black and white mindset where I have to do what I want to do right now, I would never have gotten to the position where I'm, I'm going to be at next. Because it's that flexibility and knowing your vision and trusting yourself to get there eventually that's going to actually get you there. And I don't want to sound preachy or anything, but I, I really truly think that having solid goals is how you achieve your goals. Another thing I've taken away from this journey is that at some point in your career, after you hit like the two, three year mark, it, the, the game kind of shifts. It, start, it starts off being very difficult to land interviews and getting the jobs, that you, like any job basically in the industry. But after two, three years in the industry and after you've built your network up enough, and I really can't stress how, how important it is to build up like a LinkedIn network and any network, professional network that you can build online, like building your own brand, it's gonna be super important for you to build those. That way, they're kind of like nets in the future. So you can actually collect these um, inter interview, um, what are they called? O not interview offers, but um, yeah. So people just come at you offering you interviews and then it becomes a game of uh, passing the interviews 
versus getting an interview. And then it just changes everything completely because once you're, you start, you shift your mindset from building portfolio pieces, building, um, yeah, portfolio pieces pretty much, you'll be working on passing, uh, the passing the interview skill. Like you'll be doing mock interviews, you'll be doing um, lead code, things like that. And that's really a pivotal moment in your career whenever you, it, it feels a lot less stressful because even if you, for example, lose your job, you'll still have all these interviews coming in and you could potentially find something pretty easily. I mean, I say pretty easily, but it's still, interviews are very difficult and it's a skill in itself, really. And uh, yeah, so that's my takeaways briefly <laughs> from the past few years of my career. And hopefully it helped some of you guys out, especially those with no degrees, uh, trying to grind it out out there. And uh, this is my channel, Code Phony. If you like this kind of content, please hit the like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. This is Code Phony out. Peace.